hot potatoes. When I was getting ready to make this video, I like finished up, I got my clothes on, and then I sprayed some perfume on. Smelling great for you. If you don't know, I am now back on my weekly Thursday uploads. I will be uploading from like 12 to like 1.30ish p.m. Central Standard Time. Maybe I'll have some Sunday uploads too. Also, yes, I recently dyed my hair back to black. Funny story because I dyed this myself. Um, I missed like a huge chunk right here, like huge. Like, I mean like pep mini pepperoni pizza big. Fixed it. Looks great now. Yeah. It's been a couple days since I last did it and a lot of you guys have noticed on Snapchat, but let me know below what you think. So, at the beginning of this week, I posted on Instagram and I asked you guys what video you guys would like to see next because I'm just kind of filming as I go and pretty much the number one requested video is my weight loss tips and how I lost weight. It took me like 50 years to make this video. So yeah, if you guys want to be a part of that decision-making process, uh, either comment in this video letting me know what you guys want to see next or just follow me on Instagram or Snapchat and I'll ask around again next time. If you dig these tips, make sure you give this video a like and yeah, let's get into the video. I feel like everyone kind of makes this disclaimer, but it should be kind of an unspoken thing that I am in no way like a nutritionist, dietitian, whatever. This is just what has worked for me. I'm only a pharmacist. I limited to what I learned in school about this topic in particular. I don't know like everything there is about nutrition. So just take what I say today and kind of try and apply it, but it's not like Bible or anything where you should strictly follow this and only this. I'm just gonna put that out there before we get started. So, a lot of you guys have noticed this, but I have been steadily losing weight on purpose since last December. I was at 136, the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life, and now I'm standing at an average of 113 pounds. So, since December, I've lost 23 pounds just steadily. You have to keep in mind that you didn't gain 20 pounds overnight. It was over time. Just as it took you a couple months or longer to gain 20 pounds, it will possibly take you that just as long to lose 20 pounds. I think the most important thing is to be consistent in the lifestyle changes that you are going to be making and be patient with yourself. You will lose weight if you input less than you output. So if you're consuming fewer calories than you are burning a day, you're going to lose weight. Make sure that the diet that you're picking up is actually doable for you. There's a lot of diets out there that they're saying, oh, you should cut out fat completely, you should cut out carbs completely, and no one specific diet is going to work for everyone, so you kind of have to try it. In this video, I'm going to be talking a lot more about diet versus exercise. I think the exercise component is very important, but in this video, it'll be mainly focused around diet and portion control. And personally for me, I think diet is about like 70% of the weight loss journey. I do exercise regularly on top of this diet component, but if you guys want a separate video on that, I think I might do it if a lot of you guys want it. So let me know below. So yeah, let's get into the diet component of how I lost weight. So my very first tip is to drink more water. Whenever I'm feeling ugly, I drink water. When I feel it dry, I drink water. When I'm feeling gross, I drink water. And when you're drinking a lot of water, your lips won't be so chapped and nasty, you know what I'm saying? Like raisin? Mm -mm. Your mom's not gonna wanna kiss you. Bless. Water is life. Water is love. No. I actually calculated my recommended daily water intake. If you want to calculate that, I will have the actual equation in the description bar, but I am supposed to be taking in about two-ish liters of water a day. I am right now standing at an average of three liters to four, maybe five liters of water a day. I drink a lot of water, y'all. So I'm drinking more than the minimum amount daily and I feel amazing. If you're having issues drinking water, I would set a glass of water next to your bed so you can drink a full glass or like a bottle of water right when you wake up in the morning and right before bed so that way you can at least get that out of the way. I also found it helpful that I was keeping track of the water that I was taking in every day. I actually have a big three liter jug of water 
that I just fill up. I make sure that I finish that before bed at least. And then of course, like on top of that, I'm also drinking water. When I'm out and about, boom, already finished mine. Or if you're in class all day, like get a one liter bottle of water and just make sure you drink at least two of those, two bottles of those a day. And so with me, I would drink at least three bottles of the one liter. And yeah, that has really helped a lot, just keeping track of my water intake. And if you don't like the taste of water, you could always infuse it with like strawberries or like cucumbers or something like that to make it a lot more palatable for you. But because too much of anything is bad for you, um, obviously don't be drinking like gallons of water a day. Um, I think a sweet spot for everyone is at least the two liters a day. My second tip kind of stemming off of the very first one is to eat until you're full. And why I say to up your water intake is because if you're drinking water, at least two glasses of water, so say like 16 ounces of water before breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're gonna get that 48 ounces of water already out of what you should be taking in. And I actually make an effort to drink water before I eat, while I eat, and after I eat. I always drink water 20 to 30 minutes before meals because it takes your brain that long to register that you're full. So if you're drinking water, it'll fill up that space, but also when you're eating, make sure you eat slower so that your brain can have time to process the chemicals, um, the insulin that's being released when you're eating. My main thing with why I was gaining a lot of weight back then was because I would always overeat. Like I would never ever eat only till I'm full. I would always overeat. And now I only eat until I'm full because I'm eating a lot slower. And when I feel that light pressure in my stomach, that's when I know I'm full. Let's stop. So now I completely avoid that uncomfortable feeling of overeating and getting a food coma and so on. So if you're not sure if you're full, just kind of relax, take a step back from the plate and let your food process. Just wait a few minutes and then eat again. Also drink water and sipping on water as you eat to slow down your eating, slow down your chewing. I used to chew like three times and then swallowed, but now that I'm like chewing slow, I'm chewing more and I'm slowing down with my eating, I feel a lot fuller and I don't feel that crazy uncomfortable feeling of overeating anymore. Stemming off of that point, my third, what is this? <laughs> Motherfucker, don't close. My notes are right there. <laughs> Calm your sh <laughs> And <laughs> my third main focus is portion control. I actually started to eat from smaller plates and that kind of tricks your mind to thinking, hey, I'm finishing my whole meal. I should start getting full now. And if you're like me, you like to finish what's on your plate. If you ever go out and eat, you could also split a plate. I generally, I feel like restaurants are giving you way more than you need. Or if they don't want to share with you, you could always box half of the plate and eat half the plate. Trust me, you will be full unless you're going to like some fancy fruit fruit place that like serves like tiny little portions. It's definitely a lot easier to stick to a diet if you're cooking your own meals. I know a lot of people do meal prepping. I don't personally do meal prepping because I just don't. I don't like eating the same stuff every day. I can't do that. But if you can't do that, a great way to stick with portion control is knowing your portions. So I'm actually going to leave some more information about portions and kind of how you measure things without having any measuring cups while you're cooking. Um, you kind of could measure things from how big they are compared to your fist size and all that. So I will have all that in the description bar. And this is just something that I've learned while I was on my diabetes rotation. Sometimes I like to eat some pasta and stuff. I really love pasta. So I still eat what I want to eat. But if you keep in mind your portion control, you can still eat what you want to eat. That's the most important thing. I, I feel like a lot of people feel like they should completely cut out all fat or completely cut out all carbs. and they're completely miserable because they love eating these things. But my main thing is to eat whatever you want that makes you happy, but do it in a way that's not at an unhealthy, completely ridiculous amount. So basically too much of anything is a bad thing. It was actually quite easy for me to cut out or minimize my sugar and starch intake because a lot of the stuff that are very starchy or like with lots of sugar, I don't generally like to eat anyway. So stuff like dairy products like milk, yogurt, 
um, ice cream, like I like ice cream, but I'm also limited because I'm lactose intolerant. Watermelon, I love watermelon, but it has a lot of sugar, so make sure that you are aware of what you're inputting. And also try to eat things that are not processed. I especially try and eat less of these start high starch content foods like bread, pasta, like alcohol. Drinking alcohol is bad for you too, especially like beer. That's just like liquid bread right there. I'm not saying by any means that you should start counting calories because that's not what I'm doing. I was never counting calories. Um, but if you want to, if you feel like you should count calories because you're not sure, um, you can get like MyFitnessPal. I know Samsung has an app which is like S Fitness, which you can track what you eat and it'll give you like calories and stuff. But I don't do that. I feel like that's just like way too much work for someone as lazy as me. But yeah, that could help you if you're curious because also with the Samsung one, it gives you like protein and like calorie and carb content, all that is really helpful. And why I say you want to cut back or lower your intake with sugars and starches is because these foods actually stimulate a lot of insulin secretion. And insulin is the main fat storage hormone in your body. So when insulin decreases because you're eating less of these specific foods or whatever, sugar, starches, so your body will start burning the fats instead of the carbs that you're putting in. I feel with like the protein and all the other stuff that I'm inputting, I feel fuller for a longer time instead of feeling completely miserable and hungry on a no fat or low fat diet. Diet. And this is why I like to go towards the cutting down or you know like decreasing my carbohydrate intake instead of the f decreasing like having a no fat kind of diet. So some of those low carb vegetables that I like are kale, spinach, um, Brussels sprouts. I avoid high carb ones like potatoes, corn, beans, anything fried I avoid. So with meal prep, you can definitely construct your diet in a way that'll get the 20 to 50 grams of protein that you want a day. If you don't meal prep, you, of course you can use apps like MyFitnessPal or Samsung Fitness. There's a lot of apps to count um, your protein intake a day. You don't have to eat beef, chicken, or like pork, lamb, bacon. You can get the protein from that, but of course vegans can still get protein from other non-meat products. I also love fish and seafood, which has a lot of protein. So like salmon, shrimp. I don't like lobster, but lobster also has protein. And you can also get your protein from eggs. And why I really recommend a high protein diet is that it can actually improve your metabolism by 80 to 100 calories and also keeps you fuller for a longer amount of time. So you're eating less and you're feeling fuller throughout the day. And you especially don't have to avoid fat. I think that if you cut out both fat and carbs, you'd be really, really miserable. So definitely don't ever limit yourself in terms of starving yourself. That's never a good idea. Eat high protein things and that will ultimately keep you a lot fuller for a longer amount of time. Whenever I cook, I like to cook with olive oil instead of um, corn oil or you know one of those canola oils or whatever. I like olive oil. You can do coconut oil, but there is some controversy about that. Um, I avoid using too much butter, very minimal if I have to. So yeah, you can definitely explore other oils like avocado oil, coconut oil, olive oil. And if you find that it's hard to completely cut off or at least minimize to a very, very little bit of carbs a week. You can always do a cheat day or a carb refeed day where you can choose one day out of the week to eat whatever carbs you want and kind of get it out of your system and you will be fine. You're gonna get a little bit of weight gain. That water weight gain will just be gone in a couple of days. Just don't make your cheat day, your cheat month or year or whatever because some people get carried away and it's not a good idea. My next tip is only going to lightly graze the edge of the exercise component of how I lost weight. And that is because you don't actually have to exercise to lose weight. I've been regularly exercising, but I feel like diet is 70% of the work. Exercise is probably 30, but if you can at least exercise three to four times a moderate to intense exercise, 30 to 60 minutes, whatever you can do is better than doing nothing. And when you're doing these exercises, incorporate some 
weight or strength training into your exercise. So like it doesn't have to be super heavy weight. I do a lot of HIIT and low intensity interval training, a lot of cardio, things that I like. I like to run miles and miles, but some people don't like that. So find the exercise that works for you and stick to it because exercise will only help you along with this weight loss journey. So yeah, if you guys want that exercise video, I do have an updated exercise routine and I will go way more detailed into that. Some last minute tips before I go, make sure that you keep in mind the types of liquids that you're putting in. So try and cut out the alcohol, especially beer. Um, those chasers are really sugary. So be like me and get like, um, and get like sparkling water as a chaser because it's still bubbly and it'll still kind of do the trick. Be very careful about those fruit juices. You think that they're healthy, but they're very loaded with sugar. I actually don't drink fruit juices anymore. I used to a lot and they were so sugary and so bad for you. So if you do, if you want your juice, make sure it's low or no added sugar. Also, if you eat a high protein meal, like the very first meal of the day, if, you're, if it's a high protein meal for breakfast, you're going to stay fuller longer. And my final tip is to get a good night's sleep. If you're like me, you're an all-nighter, you stay up quite late, but that can contribute to weight gain. Um, you could stay up longer. If you're staying up longer, you might get hungry. You're gonna get late night snacks and it's gonna end up like you're a whole elbow deep in those hot Cheetos or whatever. And it's just a recipe for disaster, honey. So get your good night's sleep. So yeah, that's pretty much all the tips that I've got for how I lost 23 pounds. If I missed anything, definitely check out the down bar to see if I've missed anything, I'll put it down there. But that is it for this week's video. I hope you guys dig it. If you do, y'all know what to do. And yeah, chat with me on all my social media. Let me know what you guys want to see next. And basically for next week, I will just choose the most highly requested video. By the way, I'm working on my Draw My Life video. That's gonna be like the slowest video ever because I'm being really hella extra with it and I am like doing all this extra stuff like working with multiple types of media, like painting, colored pencils, all that. Anyways, it'll be an awesome video, but it will take a lot of time. And yeah, let me know what you guys want to see other than that. I will see you guys next week. Bye.